The following is an important message from the Bucks County District Attorney. I'm a mom, and just like most moms, I worry about my child. But my worries are probably not the same as most. I'm the mother of a heroin addict. I hate that sound. It could just be a friend, or it could be the phone call I'm dreading. I never know. My eyes fill with tears. My palms are sweating, and my heart is racing. Has she been arrested again? Does she need a lawyer? Was she attacked again? How bad this time? Did she OD? Is she dead? How will we pay for a funeral? Who will care for her kids? Oh, God, I'm nauseous. What should I do? What would you do to help your child? Heroin kills. It is a matter of life and death. The following is an important message from the Bucks County District Attorney. I have read that children of parents who talk to their teens regularly about drug use are 42% less likely to use drugs than those who don't. Yet only a quarter of teens report having these conversations. If we could cut our teenagers' chances of using drugs almost in half, I have to wonder why we aren't all talking to our kids more. My husband and I never really talked to our daughter about drugs. I'm sure we had conversations surrounding them, but it certainly wasn't something we did regularly. Having never used illegal drugs in our lives, we thought that we were leading by example. We thought living in a nice, safe neighborhood would shield her from the dangers of drugs and that being a happy, loving family would give her the confidence to not need a crutch. We thought that being doting, devoted parents who supported her every endeavor would keep her on the right path, but we never regularly talked to her about it. We never told her about having close family members who are themselves addicts made her predisposed to becoming one herself. My daughter is an actively using heroin addict. She didn't start using drugs until the age of 21, when a dentist provided her with Percocet for her toothache pain. Two weeks later, in the ER with a kidney infection, another doctor gave her more. Most likely, because of her family history, she was almost instantly hooked. She abused the pills for two years, and when she was no longer able to afford them, Percocet sells for up to $25 a pill on the street. She changed her drug of choice to heroin, a much cheaper opiate with virtually the same results. I have seen statistics stating that heroin has been proven to be 50% addictive to first-time users. If you are crazy enough to chance it a second time, the addiction rate rises to 75%. To support her habit, my daughter has stolen every single thing of value from our home. All cash that was left lying around was taken. By cash, I mean anything from thousands of dollars to a few pennies. And by lying around, I mean in our wallets, purses, pockets, drawers, change jars, piggy banks, car cup holders, what we thought were clever hiding spots, or even locked in the safe we bought to protect ourselves from our own daughter. Also taken were our wedding bands, multiple TVs and cameras, two GPS units, our easy passes, a computer, her son's Wii, her daughter's Nintendo DS, an iPad, a vintage bike, rings I inherited from my grandmother, gold and silver wire from my husband's workshop necessary for his work, air conditioners taken right from our windows, and because nothing is sacred to a drug addict, a pearl necklace from my sister who had recently passed away. Most recently, after breaking into my home, she stole a second way, bought to replace the first one, and her son's fundraising box of candy to sell on the street. The next week, she hoisted her five-year-old daughter through an unlocked window 10 feet off the ground and had her unlock my doors and stole, believe it or not, food. You see, drug addicts see the value in everything. Once she was in my house and found nothing of obvious value, she had to get creative. I had just gone grocery shopping and the receipt was on the table. She collected all the food I had bought, brought it back to the store, and used the refund for her drugs. She has maxed out my credit cards, leaving me balances and monthly payments I am unable to pay, ruining my credit. She has written bad checks using my checking account. 
She wants to deposit an empty envelope into my account at the ATM knowing that the bank would allow you a portion of what you claim to deposit immediately. This caused me legal troubles and a record of fraud with the banks that disallows me to open any new accounts. She has stolen gift cards given to me for my birthday and Christmas, sold them for half their value, and used the money for drugs. She received food stamps for her children and sold them in the same way before I reported it to welfare and had them taken away from her. She has been fired from every job she has ever had because of her drug use. She has three beautiful children of which I now have custody because she's no longer able to care for them. I only recently found out she had been taking her children with her to Kensington to purchase her drugs. The final straw for me, the moment I realized I had to cut ties, was when I found her passed out in her car, needles and baggies by her side at her children's daycare. She had been shooting up while waiting to pick them up from school. It became clear that her children's safety was not her first concern, and I finally asked her to leave my home and never come back. She packed her bags, left her children behind, and moved into a shelter in Chester City. That was May 13th, 2013, the day after Mother's Day. She's been arrested for retail theft to pay for her habit, and now has a criminal record, which will follow her for the rest of her life. She has sores, track marks from the needles, up and down her arms and on her thighs. She gets abscesses at the injection sites on a regular basis, and her veins have collapsed. Even her sweet, almost baby-like voice that she once had has been affected. Because of the drugs, she now has a deep, raspy, throaty voice. It's almost like the drugs are taking over her body, making her unrecognizable even to her own family. She has had five stints in rehab, only to come back and start using again. A few months ago, I got a phone call telling me that she'd been attacked while buying her drugs. She was dragged into an alley, beaten, cut with a razor on her face, her arms, and her legs, and her clothes were in tatters. Luckily, somebody saw what was happening and called the police. Intervention from strangers doesn't often happen in the neighborhood where she was attacked, and she was lucky to have survived. Despite this, she was back in the exact same place less than 24 hours later to buy again. Her health is deteriorating quickly, and I have come to the grim realization that I will likely bury my only child if she's not able to beat this addiction. It is a fact that we parents of drug addicts must accept, if for no other reason than to soften the blow when it happens. These are some, but certainly not all of the daily struggles we face. I'm telling you all of this not to get sympathy, but to really shock you, to give you a tiny glimpse into the horrors that drug abuse can bring to your family. Yes, I said your family. Do not consider yourself or your children immune to this. I want to warn you that anybody absolutely anybody is at risk to become a drug addict. Forget all the stereotypes that you associate with drug addicts. Stop saying not my kid and not in my neighborhood. My daughter is the antithesis of what most people think when they hear the words drug addict. She is a white, middle-class, suburban girl living in a stable, two-parent household. She was an excellent student and was involved in sports and community activities. She was well-liked, popular, and had a huge family that supported her and loved her. She was never abused or molested, and yet, here we are, all because of a toothache. Children of parents who talk to their teens regularly about drugs are 42% less likely to use drugs than those who don't. Yet only a quarter of teens report having these conversations. I am repeating that statement because it bothers me and I want it to bother you. It keeps me awake with a lot of thoughts about what if and why didn't I? I can't go back in time or change how things are now. And even though she is currently in a long-term rehabilitation facility, it may be too late to help my daughter, but it doesn't have to be for you. Go home tonight and talk to your children. Do it every night until they're sick of hearing from you. 
do it until they understand the risks and the consequences. Don't assume your kids know how you feel. Tell them. Don't think they won't use drugs because they are afraid of you or your reaction. They may not have a choice. My daughter didn't. Heroin kills. It is a matter of life and death.